What's up guys, Intellitech Mobile here, and today we'll be doing a full review on the neglected Note, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. Now, this particular phone, a lot of people will gloss over it, pretend like it doesn't exist, or if they acknowledge the fact that it exists, they'll just simply say that it's not worth it, there's no point, get a Note 10 Plus or a Note 20 Ultra instead. But I'm here to tell you that while the Note 20 has its flaws, and we'll talk about those in this full review, the Note 20 is a pretty darn good deal right now, especially when compared to other devices in the Note series, or Ultra series for that matter. So let's make the case for the Galaxy Note 20 and see how well this phone holds up in 2023. Let's start off with the price because that's going to be the biggest determining factor on why you may choose a Galaxy Note 20 over a Note 20 Ultra. As of this time that I record this video, you can get really good condition Galaxy Note 20s for anywhere from $200 to $250 depending on the condition. Compare that to the equivalent Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and it's double the price when you factor in tax. So the Note 20 seems to be a very decent value proposition considering that back then there was only a few hundred dollars that separated the two. But nowadays, this price, this 220, that's how much older notes still fetch. I mean, like, let's just bring this home. This Galaxy Note 9 was $200. $200. You want to know how much this Note 20 cost me? 189. Now granted, if you buy one in the same exact specs, meaning unlocked on both sides, they're going to be the same price, or this one might be a couple dollars more, because I got this one factory unlocked, and I got this one locked to T-Mobile. So keep that in mind, there will be a little bit of a difference there. But when you compare this to even the phone that it replaced, not even the Note 10 Plus, which the Note 10 Plus is more expensive than the Note 20, everywhere you look but even the note 10 even the original note 10 in many cases on many listings that i'm seeing on ebay cost more or in the best case scenario the same as the phone that came out a year after replaced it and raised the price by 50 dollars which is pretty intense and definitely speaks to the value of the Note 20 nowadays. Now, there are a couple drawbacks to that. Obviously, it's lower in price compared to even older Notes for a reason. And what are those reasons? Well, right off the bat, if you're comparing this to the Note 20 Ultra, you don't have a Quad HD display and you don't have a high refresh rate. Now, on the Note 20 Ultra, you had to decide which one of those two you wanted to utilize. On the Note 20, you don't have either. Which, if you're comparing it to the Note 10, then that's the same. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit better on the 20 because you get a bigger screen. And the screen's flat, so depending on your preference, you may prefer a flat screen, and that may be a very big deciding factor, because after all, before the Note 20 came out, if you wanted a flat screen, you had to go way, way, way back to get that flat screen. So, you've got a flat screen, but you've got one that does not have a high refresh rate or a higher resolution, which... Personally, this may be a bit controversial among the tech space, but it doesn't matter. I'm not a relevant tech YouTuber anyways, at least not yet. With your help, I can be subscribed. I don't care about high refresh rate displays. I really don't. I've tried to use the Note 20 Ultra before in high refresh rate mode, and it makes me motion sick. So I personally can't use the high refresh rate. So the fact that it doesn't have it, irrelevant to me. The higher resolution, it would have been nice to have. I mean, after all... This thing has a 1080p-ish display. Obviously, it's 19 by 9 aspect ratio. It's very tall, so it's not 16 by 9. But it is kind of annoying to me how the $1,000 phone from 2020 has a lower pixel density than the $700 phone from 2014. But at the end of the day, despite the resolution bump that older notes have, the Note 20 just simply has a better screen. Now, if you prefer the Curve, then obviously there's no point in getting the Note 20, but you knew, that, you knew that already. The Note 10 or the Note 10 Plus would easily take that mantle. But if you don't care, then maybe you'd prefer having a flat display, display. Because if you don't care, why have a curved display? Because if you don't care about the edge panel features or the look of it, it's just something that's easier to break. So, there's an advantage right there. But also a disadvantage depending on who you are and how you look at it. 
But the simple fact that this is a lower display, lowered resolution display doesn't necessarily hurt it because since it is that resolution, it's running natively. It's not being scaled because this is a quad HD display on the Note 9, for example. So when you run it in 1080p mode, it doesn't scale one to one. If it's 720p, it scales a little bit better, but of course it's 720p, so it's going to look like crap regardless. If this was a 4K display, like what you have on the Sony phones, then 1080p would look really good on this because it's an even scaling. On 1440p being scaled down to 1080, it looks a little fuzzy, and you definitely notice that on the Note 9. But on the Note 20, you don't have that problem. So I used to be of the mindset that before I used a Note 20, that the lower resolution might be a deal breaker because I've used the Note 9 at a lower screen resolution. In fact, I've used the Note 9, 8, and 7 ever since they added the feature to scale down the resolution. I've used it at 1080p, and it looks like crap. It looks really bad. So I assumed it was going to look the same on the 20, but it doesn't because it's the native resolution. So this will look much better than a Note 9 scaled down to 1080p. Now, if you're comparing this to a Note 9 that's scaled up to Quad HD, then they trade blows back and forth. This has better brightness, better color reproduction, but this one has a slightly sharper resolution. So, take your pick. But for the most part, the screen is fantastic. My only complaint is, ironically, with the size. One of the things I loved about the Note 10 when I reviewed it late last year was the compact nature of it. My favorite note in terms of ergonomics is the Note 7, because it's decently compact for the relatively large screen you get in its chassis. And the original Note 10 was the exact same size as the Note 7, while also having the same size screen as the much larger Note 8. So there was a bit of a nice technological improvement there for people that enjoy having smaller phones. The people that had the Note 5 and the Note 7 and didn't like the fact that the Note 8 and the Note 9 made the line so much bigger. So if you're of that mindset, then you'll definitely will prefer the Note 20 to the Note 20 Ultra because the Note 20 Ultra is huge, but the difference is very negligible. The Note 10 you might be a lot more happy with in that instance. You might also be happier with the Note 10 when it comes to two different things, one much more important than the other. Color options, which I think is better on the Note 10, although the screen color is pretty nice, but we'll talk about that in a sec. And also storage, which we'll get to in a sec. We'll talk about the colors first, since that's the less relevant detail. So the Note 20, non-Ultra, comes in three colors. Technically, it comes in five colors, but the other colors are going to be really hard to find. At launch, it came out in, mixed, in Mystic Green, which is the color you see right here. It's very nice. It also came out in Mystic Gray, which is not the same as a lot of the silver that phones have come out in the past. And it's not even as light as the Orchid Gray you saw on the Galaxy Note 8. This particular gray is much darker, almost a black, but not quite black, like a very, very dark smoke gray, like a smoke gray or a charcoal gray. I don't have one of those, although I, in hindsight, wish I got that model, because, in my opinion, the, what is it called, the Mystic Bronze looks terrible on the Note 20. If you're going to get the Bronze, just get the 20 Ultra. And this Mystic Green, while I do really like it as a color, it doesn't match anything, because I've always had blue phones or silver phones, and I don't have anything that's green. You know, my watch is white and silver, and my earbuds are, well, a whitish silver. So, obviously the White 20 Ultra would match a lot more, but there is no White Note 20. If you want white, you have to step up to the 20 Ultra. Now, I know a lot of people don't care about the colors, and don't care because they're going to slap a case on it anyways. And if you're one of those people, get the Mystic Gray and don't think about it. But if you like to have color options, yeah, the Note 20 is very disappointing. Now, here's the thing that really annoys me. There is a blue Note 20, and it looks gorgeous, but we never got it here which is really frustrating because had that blue Note 20 come to the States, it's what you would see on this desk right now. Because blue is my number one favorite phone, my favorite phone color, followed by silver, followed by, well, it really depends on the phone's color at that point, what is the next color. Sometimes it'll be something like a, like a gray or a white, or even a gold, it really just depends on what the other color options are. Now one color option I always hate on phones is red, but there is a Red Note 20 that did come out in the States, but good luck finding one nowadays. It was mostly a promotional thing, didn't exist for very long, and much like with the Red Note 10, you're going to have a hard time finding one. 
but in my experience it's easier to find a Red Note 10 than a Red Note 20. So if you want a red phone, it seems like you're just SOL. So yeah, color options are a little squirrely, but there's nothing stopping you from slapping a case on or a D-brand skin. The frame of this phone is very silvery, even though it does have a green tint to it. It's mostly silver with like a very slight green tint and obviously the S Pen. So if you were to get a skin that covers up the back of the phone, then the, the green is very minuscule. And it is worth noting that the S Pens between the Galaxy Note 20 series and the Note 20 Ultra series are the same between the smaller and bigger phones. And theoretically, they're also interchangeable between those two generations, but I have not been able to successfully get the Bluetooth work in that scenario. But I don't know if it's just because the Note 10 Plus I was swapping the pens with was defective or not. I don't know. At some point, I'll get another Note 10 and try to answer the question once and for all if the Bluetooth functions are able to be swapped on opposite pens between the 10 and 20 series. But for now, limited functionality. It's not like the Note 7 or Note 8 where you didn't have the Bluetooth, so they were fully interchangeable. So just in case, that may be relevant in case you're looking for a replacement pen, because sometimes trying to color match the pen can be a little difficult. All right, we talked about color, arguably for a little bit too long. Now let's talk about storage, because this is the one thing that aggravates me the most about the Note 20. And mainly because there's a reason why I, this review took so long, and it's because I did kind of bounce back and forth between the Note 20 and my old Note 9. The reason why is because they both have the same amount of space. They have 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, here's the problem with that. The Galaxy Note 20, unlike the Note 20 Ultra and the Note 10 Plus and the Note 9, does not have SD card expansion. And it's trash. The reason why I say it's trash is for a couple different reasons. First of all, first of all, first of all, there is plenty of space in the top of the phone for an SD card slot. In case you didn't know, let's open up the top of the phone where the SIM card is. But it is nice that it has a SIM card considering so many other phones nowadays are coming with eSIM only, which is a total scam and I cannot stand that. So, there's my Mint Mobile SIM card. And, oh, I just dropped it. By the way, 5G works on this really good. Mint Mobile works really good on this T-Mobile Note 20. And, of course, the mint green color does kind of help. <laughs> I imagine that makes it work a little bit better. Just kidding. But here's an interesting little tidbit that I noticed. This is the SIM card tray that comes in the Note 20. Keep in mind, there is no version of the Note 20 that has SD card expansion. I'm trying to figure out where my SD card actually is. I think it's, is it in this Note 7? It might be. Yes, it is. So, my SIM card is in this Note. Now, let's take a look at this. Oh, would you look at that? It fits. I mean, it doesn't fit, but there is plenty of space there for an SD card slot. It's just not cut out. That's really annoying. I hate that. I can't stand that shit. The Note 10 was the same way, and it's frustrating. But here's the kicker. The Note 10, while they didn't give us SD card expansion, what they did give us is they bumped up the base storage. They bumped it up from 128 to 256 gigs of storage. And here's the problem. They did not do that on the Note 20. On the Note 20, they raised the price of the phone by $50, made it bigger for no reason, when the standard note was supposed to be the small version for people who like the smaller phones. So they made it bigger for some reason, obviously adding to costs. And then they downgraded the storage to 128 gigs. So <laughs> make that make sense. So if you had a Note 10 and you upgraded to the Note 20, you spent... $50 more than what your old phone, what you spent on your old phone to get a phone that has worse build quality if you like the glass because this is plastic and you lost the ability to have 256 gigs in your phone unless you bought an international one. International Note 20s are still 256 for some reason. Why they didn't just make them 256 across the board, I don't know. Because if it was 256, I honestly would not complain about the SD card slot. Because 256, at least for me, 
is plenty of storage. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason, they decided not to do that, and as a result, this phone is arbitrarily limited by how many things I can put on it. So if I want to use this both as my main camera for YouTube, which I normally do, I'm filming on another Note 9 right now in case you're unaware, I'm filming on the white Note 9, but you can't really see it. But it means that I have to constantly juggle my storage, something I haven't had to do on a phone since the Note 5, which I guess is fitting. The last time I had to juggle my storage was the last Note that had a flat screen. But it's just unnecessary, and it's frustrating. And that's the biggest reason why these phones do not hold their value. Because a lot of people who are going to be holding on to these phones for a long time and are looking to buy one now probably need the storage. And they're not getting it. And again, unless you import the International Note 20. And guess what? If you manage to find the International Note 20, guess what you don't get? You don't get 5G. So in one way or another... Your phone is going to be artificially limited in terms of how well it works into the future. Which is unfortunate. And it's not really necessary. But there's no use in bitching about it now, because at the end of the day, this phone already exists, there's no changing it. But it is very important. If you need any more than 128 gigs of storage, and you need it local, then you might just have to look elsewhere. Even to its predecessor. So that's a little sad about the Note 20. But we just went through a spout of it being negative. Let's go through some positives about the Note 20. First of all, plastic. That's a positive in my book. Sure, is it easier to scratch? Yeah. But you're never going to shatter it. I hear some people say, oh, it's less likely to shatter. No, you're never going to break this. The back of this phone will never break. The camera will break because it's glass. The front will break. Blake, the f hi Blake. Yes, the f the front will Blake Carrington. The front will break if you drop it. But remember, it's flat, and these OLEDs are much stronger than the OLEDs on the older notes. So you're much less likely to break this. This is the most durable note that has ever been made. So if there's previously, I said that if there was any note that you could use without a case, I said that that phone would be the Note Three which is over here underneath a pile of stuff. But the Note 3 has officially been bested by the Galaxy Note 20. Because, sure, it doesn't have a removable battery or an SD card slot, but we're talking about durability here. The Note 20 is a metal frame. It's more durable than the plastic. You don't have to worry about the screen peeling in the corners like you do on the Note 3. The Note 3 doesn't have the plastic that gets chipped, or the Note 20 doesn't have the plastic that gets chipped up on the edges and the buttons that like to break in. And... While this doesn't have the lip on the front of the screen that protects it, it's still got a really decent bezel, which, again, the glass is still recessed, but it's still a more durable glass. So it, at the very least, evens out in terms of the screen, and you're never going to break the OLED, unlike on the Note 3, where these OLEDs break all the time. So the previous title of most durable note that went from the Note 3 has now been given to the Note 20. Not the Ultra, but the standard Note 20. The Note 20 Ultra's back glass is very prone to cracking. I've never seen a back glass more prone to cracking on the Note 10 series and the Note 20 Ultra since the Note 5. The Note 5 was notorious for backs cracking, and the Note 20 will never have that problem. And if you're worried about scratches, just throw a D-brand skin on it, throw a case on it anyways. A lot of people complained about the plastic, and they're wrong. I'm not even going to say that. I'm, I'm not even going to say that it's a matter of opinion, because it's not. You're just wrong. The Note series phone was never supposed to be the phone with glass on it. The Note series was supposed to be the phone that had different material on the back that was more durable and more professional and made it to where if you liked expandability, you didn't have to wear a case on your phone because you wanted to be able to access the back to get to your battery and your SD card slot and all that stuff. Well, none of that's true anymore, but at least the part about the build quality still is. Now, it's not leather, which is kind of sad, but this kind of satin finish is really nice. And this green color, it's not the best at resisting fingerprints, but it's far from the worst. So it's definitely a very nice color, and I do really enjoy using this phone without a case. The only problem is, is that if you're not the type of person to drop your phone, 
uh, you are I am a lot more worried about it getting scratched because this does have a few scuffs at the top of the plastic those and those scuffs simply don't exist on my note 9 now granted I baby my note 9 and I use it with a case but no scratches on the back and this silver would really show scratches so yeah note 20 durability wise build quality wise like some people say that you could push on this and you kind of feel it give I really don't so I don't really buy the idea that it feels less premium I mean when you tap on it it makes a different sound but I mean when you're just using it you're not really gonna be doing that so build quality on the Note 20 design on the Note 20 is great one thing that sucks about the Note 20 why is the camera in the corner it's supposed to be in the middle they did this on the 10 it pisses me off every time I pull this out of my pocket I end up putting my hands all over the camera lens and smudging it and it's really annoying as you can see the camera lens is also huge not as huge as the ultra thankfully but it's still big enough that it warrants putting a tempered glass screen protector on it which is ridiculous you shouldn't have to do that but it's just how it is so I have a tempered glass screen protector on my note 20 because for some reason I bought a plastic screen protector at a thrift store and it came with a glass camera protector so I don't know why they didn't just have a tempered glass on the front although I do have a tempered glass for this phone and yeah one thing that's also nice about the curve screw about the curve less screen is it's much easier to install screen protectors except any of those benefits are weighed out by the fact that this fingerprint sensor makes a lot of that really difficult and yeah there's a lot of screen protectors out there that try to have a hole cut out for the fingerprint and it's really annoying so not a fan of that on the bright side the in-screen fingerprint sensor works way better than it does on the 10 series the 10 series fingerprint sensors are crap compared to this this actually works most of the time now it still has the same problems where there isn't a lot of haptic feedback in fact there's not really any and there isn't a lot of good UI element design where it can actually show you where you're supposed to put your fingerprint sensor it shows up on the always-on display but that's about it when the photo is completely off there's really not much you can do but muscle memory does kick in after a while and I do tend to get it right every time so for example pick up my phone put it right there unlocks so muscle memory does kick in and the nice thing that I've noticed is that even when I switch from using a thick case to no case my muscle memory doesn't change a whole lot so I can still learn to put it in the right spot basically right where Instagram is is where I put my fingerprint so that's pretty much that and if you're wondering what my setup is it's Microsoft launcher it's always been Microsoft launcher and this is the exact setup that I have one other thing that I really like about the note 20 is video lock screens so as you can see to match the nice green color I've got some green cleaner going not you know video of green cleaner going on my screen from whenever I took my car through the car wash very very nice effect and it matches the green color very well so that's really cute because you got the ability to have videos on your lock screen and all that is just fine you still have the option for good lock to customize all this I just haven't bothered to do it yet and always on display is nice and bright which is something where the Note 7 had a really nice bright always on display but for some reason with the Note 8 and the Note 9 these always on displays are like really dim now it's not even on on this unit but on the Note 9 I found my always on display was really dim which was something I didn't like about that phone but the, now they give you the option to make it much brighter and that's fine and since we're talking about brightness the, this thing does get very bright and although to be fair brightness hasn't been a problem with me since the note 7 but it's better it's ever so slightly better so <laughs> can't complain about any improvements it's there also charging now one thing that's really annoying is that this phone sucks at wireless charging for whatever reason it's really picky about my wireless chargers but it's not defective like my note 10 was because that's why I sent my note 10 back because the wireless charger just didn't work this accepts wireless charging just fine if we take our wireless charger slap it down most of the time it wireless charges just fine so there's not too many complaints about that now one thing that I do know is that plugging it in is super fast I've got a I don't know if it's 20 or 25 watts 
but I've got a fast charger that I've always used on my Note 9. It's one of those big bricks, and I have a very long braided USB Type-C to C cable that I've used for the latter half of the time I've had my Note 9. And it charges my Note 9 really quickly, so I have no complaints there. But it charges this thing even faster. Now it is worth noting that I do have the battery protect option on, which is a great feature. It's a little toggle in your settings, your battery settings, that lets you make the phone stop charging at 85%. It's a way to protect the battery, and I've been using it ever since I discovered that feature. I believe it might even be on by default when you first get the phone. But it's a great feature, you can turn it off if it annoys you, but I really like it because it means I pretty much never have to worry about my battery, because the battery life on this thing is good enough, even with the degradation that it's experienced over the last couple years, it's still good enough to get me through the day, even with it only starting at 85%, as opposed to starting at 100 So, it overall is really, really good. Through the power of editing, you may not have realized that it's actually three days later. So, let's continue on with the review of the Galaxy Note 20. So, next we'll talk about the performance, which, as I touched on a little bit earlier, is really, really good. However, there is a slight bug that I noticed where, for some reason, when I attempted to use the Remote Control S Pen, which is a great feature that I'll demonstrate in a sec, it froze up the entire phone. Now, I haven't yet installed Android 13 on this. It's currently running Android 12 still, so maybe that's a bug with Android 12 that'll be fixed after the update. But as of now, I haven't taken the update yet, so maybe that would make a difference. To tell you the truth, I got this phone and completely forgot about the update until, well, until that issue happened, and then I remembered, oh yeah, there's an update I didn't install. So, I was deliberately ignoring the update because for a while I didn't want it and my phone was running fine. But now that it's being a bit picky, I may have to install that update. So, I touched a little bit on the S Pen, which, first of all, since we're on the topic of the S Pen, it's on the wrong side of the phone. Now, if, if, <laughs> now, if you're someone where you enjoy having the S Pen on the left side of the phone, then hallelujah, you finally have something that you really enjoy. But for someone like me, who's grown up with the Notes, who's used every single Note, and who has always been used to the S Pen being on the right side of the phone, it's a little jarring. So, especially if I have something plugged in, then I have to reach underneath that cable and then just try to awkwardly get my fingernail in to unclick and pull out the pen. Now the pen does come out very smoothly, and it's the same physical dimensions as the Note 10 pens, but I don't know yet if they're interchangeable, but they physically will fit. So we have the note options, we can create a note, write stuff on it, pretty good. And we've got the various other note-taking apps. We've got Smart Select, we can create GIFs, we can do screen writes and write on screenshots and all that. There's a lot of great stuff, and there's a lot of stuff in here that I use all the time. The coloring mode I'll use a lot whenever I just want to just relax for a bit and do something mundane without having to really think much about it. Live Message is a really cute feature that's been around since the Note 8, and it's really cool. Here, let's see. I don't know why it's asking me for all this. Uh, no, I want, yeah, so you can kind of write on, oh, start drawing, there we go, so you can kind of do write little messages, and you can save them, and it'll essentially save it as a GIF, so this feature's been around since the Note 8, and I don't use it too often these days, but when I do, it's a very cute feature, so, and you can see it even came in the lovely bisexual color scheme, so <laughs> nothing wrong with that. So we've got a number of AR Doodle f features, which these are just kind of wacky. I don't really see a point in this. It says the front camera only supports face doodles. Well, I don't know if I really want to do a face doodle, but I guess I guess we're here, so we might as well. I guess we'll press on the brush option, and we'll I guess we'll give me a Rudolph style red nose for some reason, and we'll just make my eyes different colors I presume and it tracks it you can see it kind of see it kind of kind of lost me a little bit and then when I go back and then it tries to come back so it's it's a little weird but I guess it's cute and you can record yourself doing all this stuff it's it's kind of gimmicky but hey it doesn't hurt to have it but to tell you the truth I've never used it I forgot it was even there literally until I did this video so clearly it's not a feature I value all the time but I'll run down the features of the S Pen that I do value all the time. 
screen off memo I still use all the time and I've done ever since the Note 5. I'm constantly writing stuff down, so that's a really nice feature. You have the option to actually search your notes based off of what you type, which is really cool. So I actually haven't used that feature yet because I haven't yet had to go back and refer to my old notes, but it's a really cool feature. So if I scroll over to my Samsung Notes, there's a feature where I can actually search for something. So for example, I see there's a note there that says 2 p.m. If I want to search for 2 p.m., it actually can t find the notes where I wrote 2 p.m. This it did one that I actually wrote 2 p.m., then another one where I wrote 12 p.m., but obviously 2 p.m. is in there. So you can search what's in your notes, which, especially back when I was a student, that would have been a killer feature. And if you are a student, you may really value that. Or if you just like to refer back to a lot of notes you write yourself, that's really nice. And I mentioned the screen off memo, so I'll demonstrate it real quick. So I'll turn this off. Pen is in. We'll pull out the pen. And there we go. Now we've got our screen off memo. It says to write here. We can write whatever. Boop, 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 boop. Obviously, you write actual words like by live wire at store. And even though this is not the version of the Note 20 that has the high refresh rate display, it's just the standard 20 with the 60 hertz display, this is the smoothest S Pen writing experience that I've ever had on any previous Note. And I did use the previous Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. So this is the best writing experience. So don't be worried about the fact that the Note 20 Ultra has the higher refresh rate. Even the normal Note 20 has the best S Pen writing experience compared to any previous Note from before the Note 20. So there have been actual improvements made there. Do you care about those improvements? Well, that's up to you. I always put it on the biggest ink option, and you have the option to change multiple colors. Now, blue is normally my favorite color, but of course, this is the green Note 20, so we got to go with green for the notes. And it looks kind of nice, this radioactive neon Mountain Dew green, which is fitting because, well, I just said I was going to buy Livewire. I would have written in orange for Livewire, but there's only red, and it's more of like a pinkish so uh, you can see right there, I just tried to put in the S Pen this way because that's what I'm used to. But you gotta, every time I do this, I gotta like shuffle the phone like this in my hand to put it in right there. And it's very awkward. Now, if you're a lefty, which I'm not, but if you're a lefty and you're wanting to pull this out, I don't even know how lefty's right. But if you want to say, by, <laughs> you can tell I'm not a lefty, by, what? You get the idea. And then when I'm done with this, I can either discard or save. But if you just put it back in without doing anything, it'll automatically save it. Now, now this is really comfortable. So if you're a lefty, you're going to love the fact the S Pen's on the left. For everybody else, it's a little bit awkward. One other thing I really hate is every time I pick up this phone, my fingers smudge the camera because they just instinctively go right on the camera. And as you can see, it gets really smudgy. I may have I may have mentioned that in the previous part, but it needs to be said because I do it all the time and it's very annoying. We compare that to an older note that I pick up, and worst case scenario is my finger just hits the heart rate monitor or hits nothing. So, and hey, I complained about this a lot. You can see my notes right there. So, an older note does not have that problem. Note seven doesn't have that problem. Note nine. Again, if I pick this up, again, worst thing I touch is the heart rate monitor, or the fingerprint sensor. So, cameras do not belong in the corners, they belong in the center of the phone. But nobody listens to that anymore, because now this has a camera in the corner, so it looks like every other phone from the back, which is a bit annoying. Unless you get the Ultra, where it's that mystic bronze color, or just how freakishly huge the camera bump is. And again, even though this doesn't have the laser autofocus and the extra zoom lenses of the Note 20 Ultra, this is still the best camera that you've ever found on a note up until this point so if you exclude the ultra this is the best camera on any note technically so it's a decent upgrade from there and besides this video for obvious reasons because i only have one of these this has been my main camera and it's done a very good job i've got no complaints and i have noticed substantial improvements to both the video quality the ability of the phone to sniff out bad lighting and also how well it actually handles its built-in built -in microphone, which normally is not a thing. Now, I bought a separate microphone. In fact, I haven't even unboxed it yet. So, 
I do have a mic now, but the fact that this was a big improvement over my, my Note 9, if you don't like to have anything extra and you just use your phone and maybe a tripod to film everything, then yeah, if you're coming from a Note 9, which is the perspective I'm mainly talking about, then yeah, the Note 20 is going to be a pretty big upgrade in that regard. It just sucks how there isn't more storage to go along with the better camera that incentivizes you to take better pictures. Oh well, right? So, finally, we're going to talk about a couple things. First off, the ergonomics. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is, of course, a flat screen phone. But unlike the Note 5, which had some rather sharp edges when you held it, as the metal frame kind of stuck out a lot from the glass, and it could be a little bit uncomfortable, it was still fine, but it wasn't perfect. This is super comfortable. The plastic back easily melts into the metal frame, and it's very comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable notes that I've ever held without a case. And as I alluded to earlier, if there was any note you could use without a case, it'd definitely be the Note 20, because there's no plastic back to break, and because the front is completely flat, it's less likely they're going to be able to get it to drop perfectly flat to the point where it breaks. Now this does have Gorilla Glass 5 instead of Gorilla Glass Invictus on the Note 20 Ultra, but a lot of the drop tests that people have been doing have proven that the lighter weight and lighter build of the Note 20 has made it just as, if not more durable than the Note 20 Ultra, and... I mean, common sense, the back can never break, so overall, it's far more durable than the Note 20 Ultra. So if you like to use your phone without a case, definitely get the Note 20, because every single person I know who's had a Note 20 Ultra, case or not, has broken the back of their phone, for whatever reason. And me personally, the Note 10 Plus that I had, and I reviewed about a year ago, I also broke the back on that, because I fell with it, and it hit my air exchange, which, it's glass on metal, I should have expected it to break, but nevertheless... It did break. This physically would not be able to do that. It might get a nasty scuff, but it's not going to break. So you don't have you don't have to worry about glass, which not only is good from a repair perspective, it's also better from a safety perspective. Because if you're giving this to like a kid or something and they drop their phone a lot, you only have to worry about them breaking the front and maybe the camera lens, but not the back. The back itself is never going to break. I know I've harped on that a lot, but it's a big selling point for the Note 20, at least for me because I've always liked using notes without cases. Now, do I have the courage to use the Note 20 without a case? No, because when I first got this and I didn't have a case or a screen protector on it, I had set it on a table at a cafe, and the table was just a little bit uneven, which I didn't realize. So I was talking to somebody with this next to me, not paying attention to the phone, but paying attention to the person, because, you know, I pay attention to people I talk to, and it was just slowly moving until crash and it fell to the floor. Didn't break, but it got a nasty hairline scratch on the screen. In fact, a couple of nasty hairline scratches. The kind of thing where you don't see it when you're just using the phone, but once light gets on it, you really notice it. And I was very upset. Now, thankfully, this garbage screen protector covers it, and it actually feels okay. So with the plastic screen protector, that never breaks. Now, again, the screen underneath can break, but the plastic protector can't break. So the entire external coverage of this phone. I guess this is glass, but the in this part, this entire external front and back, at least the parts that actually touch anything, are plastic. So they're not going to break. So that's good. And I'm starting to repeat myself a little bit, so let's get into the final words of the Note 20. If you value expandable storage, and if you value... Well, actually, that's the main thing. If you value expandable storage, and you value having the fastest screen available, then obviously the Note 20's cost savings might not appeal to you. But if you don't care about high refresh rate displays like I don't, and you can live with the 128 gigs of storage, or you're willing to come to you're you're willing to deal with the sacrifices of importing a 256 gig model, then the Note 20 is worth a look. Now, it's my daily driver, and the only thing, I just wish this had more storage, because if it did, I would be super duper happy with it, even with the lack of a headphone jack. Now, the, head, the lack of a headphone jack did frustrate me today, but I'm very thankful of the fact that I kept a headphone to Type-C adapter in my wallet. Because had I lost my wallet or lost the adapter, I would have been even more upset. So, not a fan of that, but unfortunately that was just something you're going to have to deal with. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. Now, if you don't want to sacrifice expandable memory, and you don't care how old your phone is, and you want a headphone jack, and you want a heart rate monitor and you want a dedicated button that you can program as a macro when you don't want to use the assistant, and you want to spend about the same amount of money or less 
as the Note 20, then maybe get a Note 9, even though it is two generations older. Probably not this color, but a Note 9. So, but for most people, they're going to want the newer phone. And the Note 20 definitely does deliver. So I really like the Note 20. Is it going to stay my daily driver? I don't know. And again, the storage is the biggest thing because I could deal with everything else. The storage, though, it's a bit of a problem and it can be quite frustrating. So that's pretty much that. This is Intellitech Mobile signing out. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, found it helpful, found it informative, and above all else, found it in-depth and engaging. If not, I sincerely apologize, and be sure to let me know why you didn't like this video if you didn't like it in the comments below, hopefully nicely, because I am still new. Well, not new, but because I've been reviewing phones for a long time on my other channel, but as far as getting back into it again on a not-so-regular basis, this is the first in a while. So, I mentioned everything there is to mention about the Note 20, and unlike many other channels, we did not neglect this Note. So, is it worth your pennies? Or, why did I say that? Is it worth your dollars? Possibly. It is money green, after all. But, of course, it depends on what features you want. Obviously, if you want the latest and greatest, you're not going to get that out of this. But chances are, if you're shopping for the Note 20 series, you probably aren't anyways. So, if the SD card slot and the MS and the M or if the SD card slot and the higher refresh rate is something you value, pick up a Note 20 Ultra. If you just value the SD card slot and you don't mind going back a generation, consider picking up a Note 10 Plus or even a base model Note 10 since you have twice the base storage. But if you want 5G and you want the cheapest 5G Note that you can get and you want to take advantage of the really good value that this Note 20 is right now when you buy it from the right places, then you definitely want to pick up the Note 20. So anyways, this is Intellitech Mobile signing out with my full in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, let me know your experience with the Note 20, and I'll see you guys in the next video, which will likely be a retrospective review yet again on the best Note that was ever produced, the Galaxy Note 9. Anyways, this is Intellitech Mobile signing out, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace!